I recently played through Undertale Yellow's Pacifist Root, and it was pretty hard, but I wanted to put my skills to their limit, so I had Flowey reset the game so I could go on a murderous rampage and hopefully not regret my actions. Just like with Undertale, it's not that easy to make killing monsters for 20 minutes sound interesting. However, something I should point out is that there's a cap for how many monsters you can defeat in each room. I'm not sure if you have to reach this cap in every room or just destroy a specific number of monsters, but I wasn't going to take my chances and had to back track to previous rooms. Something that was completely unexpected though, is that the battle music changes when you get to the last 7 encounters in the area. And I gotta say, this might be one of my favorite tracks in the game. Hearing it for the first time in game was just so hype for me. But that's only half of why this song is so great. Every monster you encounter after this point will start to slow down the song until you've wiped out the entire area. I wasn't planning on spending this long talking about music. The final enemy in the Dark Ruins is Delve, since I didn't fight Desabat in this run. And unlike Toriel, we don't kill him in one hit. This was exciting, as maybe we fight more than two bosses in this game. That being said, Delve is still incredibly easy. I got hit quite a few times at the start, but he went down in just a few turns. Thought we destroy the barricade on the door for us, and we can go terrorize the outside world. He tells us that no one would notice all the missing ruins monsters, and that we could change our ways at any point, but we all know that isn't going to discourage us from committing hundreds of first degree murders. So after killing what felt like a trillion froster mitts, as well as a single and Somnathot and No Cone, we can storm the Honeydew Resort, which is now mostly abandoned. The three band people are still here for some reason, but as long as they don't snitch on me stealing from the shop, I'll spare their lives. Our next roadblock is Martlet, who at first thinks we haven't evacuated yet, but after attacking her three times, we can begin the actual fight. And she was actually quite challenging. Not only can she survive a fair amount of hits, but her damage output is pretty high, and sometimes I'd be taking half of my health in one turn. Even though I had a lot of healing items for this battle, I still died quite a few times. We were only at the second boss, and already I was starting to regret attempting this route so quickly. But this game's gonna have to do a lot harder than this to make me lay down. So after dying like 10 times, I started playing to learn strats to dodge all of her attacks. However, that wasn't really working out, so I just went into this round seeing how far I could make it without healing. I had no faith at all, especially when I kept getting hit at the start of the battle, but somehow, I managed to get really far into the fight before deciding I should probably heal. A few hits later, and she was forced to retreat, so we're gonna have to track her down later. But after taking Flyway's suggestion and hopping on this raft, we are sent plummeting down to the dunes. Can you guess what happens here? We spend 20 minutes killing things! If you can't tell at this point, this video is gonna be so much more fast paced than my pacifist playthrough. We still have to fight El Bailador, but instead of this being a rhythm game, we just sit up here and watch as the bullets miserably head off the box. Anyways, now he's dead, and oh look, it's Martlet. We threaten her with our gun, and she runs away saying that we'll never get away with this. Why do I have a feeling that she might actually be right? After entering this ghost town, we have a standoff with Starlo, and yeah, he lost, which angers Soroba, so she rushes onto the scene and leaves with this bullshit attack that immediately stuns us and cuts down our max HP. In my pacifist playthrough, Soroba was a bullet hell, and right off the bat, I can tell this is going to be even worse. I don't even know what to say for this boss, because every single attempt was just stupidly difficult to dodge attacks, which ended with a game over within the first minute. Oh, and did I mention that Soroba has two phases? Yeah, so after spending 30 minutes making it past the first phase, we jump straight into another insanely unpredictable attack. And for some reason during this phase, my max health was depleting extremely quickly. I had no idea what was going on for a while, but after painfully making it back here, I figured out that the box turned red, which was what was shredding through my HP. So yeah, I die for the hundredth time, and after another hour and two minutes, I finally beat her with a mere two HP remaining. At this point, it was clear that Flowey was starting to get annoyed with my killing spree, but right before entering the Steamworks, he leaves me with some friendliness pellets to load into my gun. Does this mean that despite everything, we're still friends? Flowey's not too sure how to open the door to the Steamworks, so we pull out our gun and the door opens. Uh, sure, that works? Our solution to turning the generator back on is also shooting at it, and I have to agree with Flowey here. Bullets aren't the answer to everything. Clover walks past and orders Flowey to open this door with his vines. He resists, but after menacingly staring at him, he gives him. We meet Axis, and would you be surprised if I told you we shot him? He does escape, however, but we'll find him soon enough. We destroy all the other robots, but since they aren't technically monsters, we don't actually get any XP for it. Flowey questions the point of it, but Clover's been blinded by just 
justice, so all they can think about is revenge for the five previous humans. We find Axis again, and something funny is that instead of him chasing Clover, Clover chases him. He does escape again, but not for long, because we continue to follow him until he has nowhere left to run. He uses a shield to block all of our attacks, so we are forced to survive until he says something that he'd instantly regret. He tells Clover that he was forced to kill one of the missing humans, and this enrages Clover, making them gain five levels as they continuously try to shoot past Axis's shield. When this doesn't work, our soul transforms and Clover blasts him with a huge beam. I didn't even realize how short this fight was going to be, because I ended up using all of my healing to learn the attacks, and then just like that, the battle was over, and I really shouldn't have saved after beating him, because while we can get some healing in Hotland, it's pretty terrible for the most part. There's one item that heals 50, and the rest only heal 30 and below, but there is no time to think about it, because Martlet stands before us, and transforms into this beast where we have to use our new soul's ability to chip away at her health bar. This fight is nothing like we've seen in this game. We do get the dash ability like the pacifist Soroba, but Martlet's attacks take the bullet hells from before, and multiplies them by 20. On the very first attack, I lost half of my health. And keep in mind that I now have 92. These attacks were so chaotic to the point where I don't even know what's going on half the time. And it doesn't help that she deals 11 damage per hit either. I was fighting her for over an hour just trying to learn her attack patterns, yet I wasn't getting any better. I was dodging attacks more often, don't get me wrong, but there's just so much going on and you have to focus on like 12 different things at once. If I had more items that didn't heal an average of 20 HP, I probably would have won by now. But since the game decides they are basically not allowed to get hit anymore, here I am doing the exact same thing, hoping something will be different. This fight was so hard that in a recent patch, they added a healing act to help the player out. But I have to prove myself by beating Martlet on the old version. And even though I was already at about 37 deaths, I wasn't frustrated because I got the chance to listen to this masterpiece of a song the whole time. The one thing that did kind of annoy me was just how unfair this attack is. Like, where where am I supposed to go, and why is the dash ability not activating half the time? After another hour of attempts, I finally brought her health to zero, which released a flashback. And to no one's surprise, this boss has a phase two, and I had run out of items. Thankfully this phase is shorter, but that doesn't mean it's any easier. I could only get about halfway through the fight before my HP dropped to zero, but if I had healing items, I wouldn't be having this problem. I struggled for yet another hour before I made the tough decision of throwing in the towel. While I do I believe this fight can be pretty unfair, it's really only because the items you get after access are terrible. Like why am I getting monster candy for the final boss? So I updated to the new patch in hopes of standing a better chance. It's sad that I won't be able to say I beat her out of her hardest, but if you die for 3 hours, I don't think it'd be an accomplishment either way. But uh, even if I had a healing act, it didn't change the fact that I had 6 items with 3 of them essentially being useless. So I reset and played through the entire game again, also I could have real items for this one boss. I got back to Hotland with a stock of amazing items, and I had to use all of them. I was getting really good at using my dash ability to dodge attacks, but I was still getting hit a ton during the last half of the first phase. And when I reached the second, I was so unfamiliar with all of her attacks that I was taking a lot of damage. Luckily, I saved two floral cakes and gunpowder which heal 50 and everything respectively, because if I didn't, I probably would have died again. But astonishingly, I didn't even have to use the new heal act, because literally all I needed was to learn a few attacks and have good items. And just like that, I shot her down on my first try. Flowey appears and tries to kill us, but at this point Clover's determination was far stronger than his, so we steal his ability to save. He tries so hard to damage us, but Clover is not having it. We shoot him down with his own friendliness pellets and storm the castle. We find Asgore who also tries to kill us, but uh, yeah that doesn't work, and we use our soul to obliterate him and the wall. So yeah, we walk through the barrier with the souls and the underground is left to suffer.